All right, you ready, uh, Marlene? Email, snail mail, <laughs> you answer it all. Carrier pigeon. Carrier pigeon? Yeah. Oh, kitten. Kitten, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, I'm a new plant father, and I think I overwatered mm. my star jasmine. How much should it be watered? Here's your picture. Oh, congratulations on being a new plant daddy. Yes, um, yeah. So the funny thing is, is underwatering and overwatering look the same because what happens is obviously when you underwater, there's not enough water getting to the cells. We know that, but when you overwater, what happens is you literally clog up the water transport system. So in it, it really, the top isn't getting water. So then it wilts as well. So the oh. way to tell is of course, dig down into the soil. And it sounds like you're already aware you overwatered it. So uh, yeah, most people kill their plants by overwatering. They love them to death. So really for a star jasmine, water when it's in a pot, make sure it's always water comes out the bottom wait for the air bubbles to dissipate coming out the top so you know the soil's completely saturated and for something like star jasmine don't water it again until the top you know like this pot size maybe four inches or dry um, oh. especially if it's in the shade you're, you're not going to need to water it every day of course if you plant it and it's 110 and it's a newly planted plant you'll probably have to water it every day for you know a week or so but okay. hopefully this bounces back fingers All crossed right. Um, question number two, uh, what's wrong with the roses here? Yeah, so I have this could that be, too. You have that too? Yeah, okay. some of it them. Could be new, it could be numerous things. Oh. It could be not watering. That could be a sign of drought. You know, your, your leaf edges will burn, but also the petals because they're most sensitive to the water is the edges because the water is just not getting to the edges. There is a pest called thrips. It's really hard to see, but they do cause damage like this. Um, they're elongated. Their larvae is pretty clear looking, but the adults are black and you will see them moving around. I don't see any on that picture. So it's possible that that was more of a drought issue. Now there is fungus that could cause that, botrytis, but I don't see any signs of that. And it is rare this time of year to have it on your roses. Usually if we have a lot of rain or it's really wet, it'll, it'll be more so. Mm, okay. All right, last one this round. All the leaves on all plants look like this in the same bed, fungus or what? Yeah, so this is, this is interesting. It's not a fungus. Um, cupping of leaves going forward, like inside, that could be a sign of drought or even overwatering. But if all your plants only in one bed are getting it, I would then think virus, but it's weird to have different varieties of plants with the same virus. Viruses are tend to be more specific. Um, and also for viruses, you would see like this modeling on the leaves. Now that leads to possibly a nutrient deficiency. And I'm thinking maybe calcium or zinc, but there's not even discoloration on the leaves for that to happen. But I would start with that. I would give it a complete fertilizer. I would try to do a foliar feed so it gets into the plant faster. Um, but if this year they don't uncurl, it, it could be a virus and remove that soil because viruses can stay in the soil. But like I said, it's very rare for uh, viruses to attack all plants in the same area that are of different species. Okay, very good. But it's not a fungus. Not a fungus. Okay. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> the thing I took out of that, not a fungus. All right, follow Marlene the Plant Lady, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and uh, share Flower Power Garden Hour. And there's the correct email if you want to send in a question. Awesome. All right, she'll be back in about half an hour.